The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour on this, uh, what is it, Thursday, the 15th of, oh, Ides of March. And uh, we're looking at a Dow that's up 252 points at 25, back over 25,000, just barely, 25,011. Uh, the S&P is up. Oh, let me do this. I want to get a whole bunch of things done because I want to take today and tomorrow to treat it as Chapman Wave, the one of those more intense sessions where we look at the nitty gritties of at least the way I look at markets and the Chapman Wave methodology. I had numerous questions about certain aspects, so let's just get to this right away. And I just want to mention also, I've noticed over the last, I think I can say three months, it might be two months, but it might be three months. At least this year, 2017 and uh, 2018, that there are a number of people that I've come across who I have noted, who I had noticed over the years, just by following what they've said about what they they're doing. Not, I don't have no idea about the actual portfolio or anything. Just on things that maybe in the den, maybe sent to me, uh, maybe there's a text or an email or something. And I've noticed there are a number of people that were doing absolutely fantastically in their own methodology. And as time has gone on, I don't know whether they've added to it or subtracted, I don't know what they've done. It seems to me they're not doing, and I could be wrong, I'm just going from what I kind of perceive, right? They're not doing as well. They're making mistakes that they never made before, or they're, more, they're actually confused, whereas before they made a statement went with it invariably from what i heard it would turn out correctly and now they're kind of struggling i don't know if that's been a change in the market i don't know i'm not sure what it is it could be one of a hundred different factors this is a psychological game let's face it so i want to try to deal with that a little bit over the coming week um just as i'm perceiving it because this is stuff that i like to say integrating into my own thoughts or in terms of trading, the difficulty, the ease, etc. So let's go to it. 750 up on the uh, E mini, the June contract. This is trading at 2761. May that peak D at 2807. It's in an up channel. It's holding the nine period moving average. The MACD is good, way weaker than it was when it hit that high up on the 27th, 29th, at 2883. Uh, with a plunge down to 25.32, takes a while for technicals to repair. So the MACD is good. It's not as great as it was before. The stochastic is fading. It's making a lower right shoulder, and it's suggesting that it's really struggling here. On balance volume is doing some really weird things. Uh, flat, then zips all the way up to a, uh, like a high, and then a, way down to a low. Now it's trying to rally. So I'm not going to discuss that in terms of the E-mini. The weekly chart is what we're focusing on, and this weekly chart says there's a potential for an up-channel breakout if the E-mini in the next week and a half, let's call it two weeks, let's give it some time, a chunk of March. If we can go into the last days of March, anywhere near the 2850s, that'll be really impressive. If it starts to fail and closes on any weekly basis under 27, 41 is the nine-period moving average, under 27, Oh, I'd say 37. That's going to be a big negative. 120-minute chart. It's a technical Friday, but I'm treating it as a tomorrow. I'm treating this as a... So I've got a, a, a channel line. I've got the Chapman Wave inside track. Remember those two little lines that are on the outside of a, of a, a potential trend um, with highs and lows? Um, and we, we stopped right in it. And now we're pulling back. And the MACD is about to cross positive, which would be a good thing. Stochastic's improving. All I can say is that we, we did get somewhat oversold. And if there's a bounce, it needs to take out today's high of 27.67s. Needs to go above that. And right now it's at 27.60. 
And if it does that, it closes towards that level. We could even have another day or two of up move. Now, let's go on. We're going to go to the actual cash indices. The Dow. The Dow right now is up 245. It's on right on the 25,002 uh, nine period exponential moving average. There's this wedge formation, um, pennant flag. It hasn't been able to break to the top side. It hasn't been able to break the bottom side. It held it exactly. The Dow did actually uh, close below that. So this is going to be very interesting. We're getting to the apex. That's the, the where the, the little V shape comes to a conclusion, maybe a conclusion. And the same thing with the weekly chart. The weekly chart says a close in the 25,000, right there, 25,590s in the next week or so would be very positive. Well, we we'll pause. Not very positive. Very positive is hitting 26,000 uh, in the Dow. Uh, right now, up 236 at 24,990s. You got that 25,000 barrier. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, if there is a close below 24, uh, the low yesterday was 24.6. Was it 24.668? Yeah, 24.668. If there is a close in the Dow that takes out that support. Um, that's going to imply that you've got to watch out. That whole 24,500, 24,300 area is going to be sacrosanct. So in the meantime, the 200-period moving average of the Dow hit the, uh, was hit, and now it's pulled back quite sharply. So those are the parameters. Let me get out of this right now. We don't need it. 120, we can put it to sleep just for a moment. Weekly chart, I've just said what's going on. That monthly chart says any time in the... I, it really has to be within about uh, no more than two months. So this is one month we've gone, touching the 23,360 area. My, my uh, assessment is that if, based on this Chapman Wave Roman candle, if there is a close on a weekly basis below 24,200, watch out below. Just make it real simple. All right? Now, and the upside, I would say, if there was a close above 26 monthly chart, above 26. Thousand doesn't even have to be about 26,150. I would say, ha, huh, could even retest the old high. Okay, here we go. Um, the SP, SPX, SPX, let me get to that. SP is at 2755. Um, it is up six, sitting on the nine period moving average, haven't made a peak D, a little bit better looking chart than the Dow, but not great, not as good as the Q's, and we'll get to that. But all I can say is that on the day, let's go to into expiration Friday tomorrow. If there is a close above yesterday's high of 2777.11, must be a close. I'm going to have to say, you know what? Sideways rotational correction is ongoing. But if there is a close below 2747 ish, mm, 2744. 2744 in the next two days, ha, be careful. QQQ, here we go. QQQ up 24 cents at 171.92. Um, kind of struggling here, but it is holding the nine period moving average. The MACD is only flat. It's not breaking down. Stochastic still over 80% at 81, but turning down. Got to watch this closely. If there is a close in the um, Qs below 169.50 in the next, going into Tuesday of next week, that's, that's pretty negative. But if there's a bounce, and that bounce can hold at 173.50s or higher, then I'm going to say to you, you know what? We could go sideways a little longer until some of the indices like the SMHs, the semis are really ready to tank. I'll be back. Uh, we'll talk about gold, talk about snow, talk about high-grade copper, talk about crude oil, talk about bonds. Would you like exposure to the foreign currency markets without any downside risk to your principal? then consider the Petro Currencies Market Safe CD from Everbank. This three-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD leverages the performance of four equally weighted currencies from these top oil-producing countries, Brazil, Canada, Mexico, and Russia. This CD features a 200% leverage factor, which means that your potential upside payment will be double the currency's average performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And if the returns are negative, your principal's 100% protected. 
Returns are based on CD performance with no correlation to the price of oil, and there is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. The April 19th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA FSB member FDIC. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, folks, we're back. So, uh, down the two today, the SMB is up 475. The IWM is down 56 at 157.15. <coughs> uh, I haven't yet been able to call this a peak E in the daily. Double top failure so far in the weekly. <clears throat> Same thing in the monthly. Remember the monthly <clears throat> had held pretty well, um, but I was watching that nine period moving average. It did not come back like the others did into the middle of the uh, Roman candle. <clears throat> so, so far, this is all saying that the IWM over the last three days <clears throat> has been weak, but its retracement is more in the tradition of what we see early in the year where the Russell 2000 stocks very often have a little bit of a better percentage move up than the others. But in this case, all I can make it is make it as simple as possible. At 157.15, if there is a close below the nine period and <clears throat> I always want to check this. I think it's a 14. Yep, 14 period exponential moving average at 155.93. If there is a close and then a bounce, and that bounce, if there's a close below the nine period moving average, the 156.70 level, and it goes then under 155.50. <clears throat> The next bounce is going to be really important to see if it doesn't make another small H pattern. So, so far <clears throat> on the day, it's very weak. But as a percentage move down and as a monthly chart formation, holding above very well above the 149.90 <clears throat> nine period monthly uh, EMA, exponential moving average, is very good. Getting very close to the 160.63, all-time high, <clears throat> very good. So all I'm going to say is <clears throat> I better have some tea. Mm. 
<clears throat> there you are. So, within the context of the IWM, hasn't broken down yet, but if this is a peak E and I can only put the plus sign in, I can't put the, the down arrow until it starts to close under the 9 EMA, the MACD closes negative. To get it negative, the IWM would have to close under 152. I'd probably say under 150-150 to get that MACD negative. And the stochastic, you go from 85% to, say, 78%, you wouldn't need as much, maybe just a point and a half to two points lower. But, uh, yeah, it's holding quite well, considering. All right, here we go. Gold down um, nine. Whoa, it wasn't down nine before. Now it's down nine, and I keep seeing this. A peak A that goes to a peak A minus because it makes an H pattern or inverted V takes out the left side low, does it over and over and over. It's the third time it's done it since that peak D top back in late March in the one th uh, 1360s, and now we're at 1316s. And the uh, weekly chart, as I said before, looks to me like it's a trading range with slightly lower highs, slightly lower lows. The, the 1302, 200 period moving average in the day is probably going to be the real test. If it breaks that, that's not very good. Monthly still doesn't look too bad um, because the 9 period moving average is at 13.06 and so at 13.16. So we'll see by tomorrow afternoon we'll have a better uh, um, uh, configuration in the weekly chart and see what happens. If you're looking at um, the dollar, the dollar's running, but it's been doing that in and out and in and out. Trading range is getting smaller and smaller. MACD is rallying, but the price hasn't really rallied strongly. Stochastic is very weak. I, I think the dollar in gold and silver, dollar right now, 21 cents and 89.98, and silver is very weak. I just think that these are in trading bands. The dollar perhaps could have a little slightly higher highs and higher lows, and do, uh, gold and silver are so far showing slightly lower highs and lower lows. Well, that's not really true because silver would need to take out the low of the 1st of March, at 16.16 and it's at 16.40 right now. You can still keep chopping around. Ha, huh. we want to go to this. First of all, high grade copper. <clears throat> Same kind of pattern. Nothing much to see here. But oh, wait a minute. The TLT <clears throat> made a new recovery high, trading at 120.04. Had a high today of 120.49. Leg C hit the 200, the, hit the 50 period exponential moving average right there, and just stop dead in its tracks. And MACD is very strong. Stochastic is good, but not great. And uh, this is a really nice balance. However, let me put it into context, long-term charts. Here we go. That was a very strong, quick move to the downside. But wait a minute. Look how sharp the upside was. So you took three, three weeks to go from the low of 30.23, the week of the 9th of February, to the high of 32.21 the week of the 23rd of February. And now you're at 30.63 with a low to this week of 30.42. It's not even taking out the left side low and there's three bars. Like one, two, three, one, two, three. Ah, wait a minute. We should go four because it's one, two, three to the high. So it's two down. Two down is nothing. This is the third day. Yes. So this is actually so far just a little bit of a match on the left side to the right side. And the 10-year, the TNX, the brown one, is trading at 28.28, 2.828. And it hasn't taken out the left side low of 27.95. And the five-year is stuck in this little range. I drew this, this, uh, there you are. I drew this oval pattern to show that there's a chance we could get a Chapman wave um, well, a stalk leg formation would need more time, but something like that. And it's either going to be a big reversal in the five-year, and I thought they would maybe hold steady until the 30-year can build some energy and then take out 32.21 for leg D. Um, we'll see. Now, my contention is always that the T-bonds find favor when the equities become volatile. What does volatile mean in technical analysis? It doesn't mean what you think. It means what everybody believes, and that is volatile means down. Strong means just going up. 
But when you get down moves, everybody says it's becoming quite volatile. Not true. We are seeing volatility if you look at the smaller range because it goes up and down within uh, intraday, hundreds and hundreds of points up and hundreds and hundreds of points down and then back again. Percentage-wise, that's very small. Remember, the, the higher the number, the smaller the percentage pullbacks are in things like the down, the S&P, New York Stock Exchange, etc. So a really big 5% correction would be um, something of the magnitude instead of a 10, uh, let's see this, uh, so instead of a 240 being uh, just a, a one percenter, you'd have 5% going 700 points or so. So uh, 12 would be, no, it's not even that. It would have to be 1,200 points to get a 5 percenter. So yeah, just think of that in terms of percentages. Now, I did want to show this since I want to make this more technical. You see this high that was made in the iShares Global and Timber Forestry ETF above the 77.99 high that was made in February the 2nd, the week of February the 2nd. I'll talk about that in terms of all the V-shaped patterns we're looking at, and I'll talk about this cup formation that's trying to form in the, in the housing sector. I'll be right back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the TAS Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan's Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the TAS Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So what we have here is not really speed to the upside in the TLT. But we have had a very steady move above the nine period exponential moving average to a C, a leg C. Um, the nine period differential is acting very nicely. The histogram you can see is vertical lines are expanding. 
the stochastic at 77 percent should go 80 and percent and above for me to feel comfortable that it can last a little longer so it's going to be how news is perceived and how we get the next move either up or down for instance where did that go the tbt has just made a peak right there peak d and come down in leg c in a down channel very steady nothing no big deal here but the MACD has moved down really sharply, the, obviously the equivalent of what's happened to the upside in the TLT, and this is the inverse of the TLT. Stochastic's now gone to 19%. Now that's just under 20%. So we're going to start watching here to see, is there any chance of a rebound? And the rebound in the TBT at 37.46, up 13 cents, really has to close above 38.05, the nine period moving average, as a starter. But that's really not the issue. The issue is this downtrend line and this doji candle right here on the 9th of March at 38.99. In other words, the TBT goes back to test, even touches 39. And that would say to me, ah, now we're going to start seeing that 30 year start to climb. Until then, <clears throat> chop, 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 and a huge move uh, <clears throat> down in the uh, TLT and a huge move to the upside is a consolidation phase. Now, a couple of things that I want you to do. A, a, a couple of people have asked me about Boeing. Well, this is very interesting. <clears throat> I showed this to my subscribers because we had this long at three, right there, first 351. Let me see if I can squeeze that a little bit. Hey, where did it go? There. We shorted it at 353.01. It subsequently went down to 330. Seven, I think it was 339.37 overnight, and the low, the actual low was 335.30, and then what happened? You had a huge rebound, and it rebounded. And what I said is, we want to get it again for the H formation. Well, it turns out the H turned out to be like a little mini M, lowercase M, instead of an H. <clears throat> and as I said, we should be shorting. Didn't even have a chance. It just plummeted. And what I was looking for was a Chapman Wave 1 to 1 parallel extension. Now, this is a little different to other, other techniques that you've heard of with a 1 to 1. In this particular instance, you have the same angle of ascent or descent. You have the same, it'll obviously be maybe not the same number of bars, but it should be the same price. So you go from 371s to 335s. You bounce to about the three, what was that? 355s, so you should have had a tw 16, so you got a, a is that 26? Yep, there it is. So that's 371 <clears throat> to 335, so that's um, 36, and now you should have had a 36 point decline from the 355 area. That takes you to what, 317 ish? Uh, am I right? Yeah. And what did it do? It went to 322. <clears throat> So it didn't it didn't quite get there. It should have been a little bit. Yeah, that's right. It should have gone a little more. It didn't. And now it's trying to rally. And it's done it in the same angle. Now I can open this bar. You can see this technique. It's really a very interesting technique. Look, same angle, uh, not the same number of bars. That was from the top. It was one, two bars down. Yeah, from the top, yeah, it was two bars down. Same thing. So this is going to be very interesting because what happens after that, it either just it doesn't even breathe. It just continues down within one maximum two days, or it has another attempt at a rally. And that's the one that says, now you've got to assess. Is this going to break down in the in the weekly chart? Now you've got to go to the weekly. Well, the MACD, it isn't Friday at 4 o'clock, but it's Thursday. So I don't know. But so far, the MACD is cross-negative, stochastic's down uh, below where it was, but it's still at 80%. So, so far, the weekly chart is saying, we're on the cusp. I put it down, area, and I shouldn't have done that. I did that for my subscribers for the analysis I wanted to give just to show that it was way below the nine period moving average. My thinking was that it wouldn't go above 338, the nine period moving average weekly uh, resistance by Friday. I took a chance. I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should have just put the plus there. But in the meantime, it's saying that there's a chance that Boeing might be making at least an intermediate term hat trick top. With all those billions of uh, dollars waiting there for new planes and things, 
it needs a rest after a spectacular move. Maybe sideways, maybe down. But all I can say is if Boeing at any point goes back to 353 from this level in the next week, I'd have to say, you know what, sideways move, nothing to see here, folks. But if it breaks down, that's going to be very interesting because then you've got to think of aerospace and defense. And now look at Raytheon has pulled back from 222 high of the 27th of February, <clears throat> trading now at 208. So this is going to be very interesting. So question that was on Boeing. XOM again, always get XOM. <clears throat> uh, it's just kind of stuck. I, I must say, uh, until, hey, wake me up when uh, XOM is either trading above 77.50. It's a 74.52 right now. Um, so three points higher or only one and a half to two points lower, because that will say it's breaking down and that the 71, 200 period exponential moving average is next. Next question I had was, um, oh, very good question. GBTC, GBTC, <clears throat> what is the question? <laughs> Uh, Rob says, Basil, I'm on the road today, so I'll have to catch uh, the replay of your show later today. I'm hoping you can take a look at the Bitcoin ETF GBTC. Thanks, as always. Love the show, Rob. <clears throat> Thank you, Rob. So I'm still of the opinion that I'm not yet prepared to look at GBTC for my subscribers. <clears throat> if you're a short-term trader, you remember we spoke about that move Back about two weeks ago, it was in about the 18, I think it was 17.75. And I said, it's going to go quickly into the 18s and then hold. But it went quickly, very quickly to the 18s. It didn't hold. And I don't like that. So I'm going to just say that there's an H pattern in the weekly chart. Hold off, have patience. There's a chance that there's going to be some news event. Next thing you know, it's trading in the 19s. And you say, oh, my God, I missed it. I'd rather say I missed it for that reason that it just happened so suddenly than to say, oh, my goodness, overnight we got in at 1332 where it is now, and there's this terrible news. I think there's more bad news to come. Competition, I don't know what it is. And that candle low that was made back on the uh, 9th of February of 9.60, we don't have to hit it, but we're suddenly heading towards it. So, Rob, I'm just going to say I'm, I'm going to avoid this now in your case, because you're able to buy it, you're comfortable, because I know you've, you've done it before, putting in a stop, I, I will, I'll see to it that I'm able to give something, but let's see how it can handle 12.55, the 200 period moving average. My, the techniques that I'm using right now are suggesting that it's getting closer to some kind of a decent bounce. That's just a decent bounce, not the real thing. So just be a little careful. Oh, we've got a break coming up. And as we go to the break, if I'm able to, let me just quickly show you the GBT. This is a Bitcoin. Uh, I think, yep, I got it. I'm sliding across. There are Bitcoin making lower lows. Got that arch formation. Hey, be careful. So I'll be back. I was up 207. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TF and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! 
Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. My box has up 207, S&P's only up 3.31, and what is the comp index doing now? Can I finish that? Yeah, down three. Um, that's 14, 8, and 93. Whew, not so good. And the VIX index right now is uh, down 73 cents at 16.3. I love this, the fact that the VIX index is... See, every other time we've had this massive move to the downside, a whole 1% or 2% or 3 and the VIX would scream higher. Let me show you right now what I'm talking about. This time there's disbelief because people have been hurt so many times by grabbing the short side and being wrong that they're just saying to themselves, no, 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 I, hey, wake me up when the VIX gets to 25. Um, I think that this is a very interesting period because both my trend gauge <clears throat> is just showing nothing there and the VIX is just blasé. So that's saying to me, ha, when you go down stair-step and the VIX index, and let's see what the Vixen, which is the uh, Vixen, Vixen, Vixen. Don't type it on the chart. Type it right there. Okay. VXN.X. <clears throat> Same thing. Okay. So I was asked about Home Depot. I'm going to tie this all in now. <clears throat> You see this platform? You know, Tom O'Brien says this expression, when you bang against the ceiling and then finally you get through, you bang against the floor and you finally get through to the next floor. So, look, you're banging against this bottom here. Home Depot couldn't do no wrong. Just on an amazing chart, going to 207 at, on the 29th of January. <clears throat> Makes a peak D. Remember how important these Ds are? All week I've been showing you Ds. I could, I could have a whole session right now just going through not e's and f's and d just d's and they are so important so you go from 207 you plunge down to 175 175.42 on the six and then what happens 75.42 on the two six it bounces zip up and then it comes and has a retest. It goes all the way to 195 and then comes back down to the 175s. Then it bounces again to 191. And then it comes back down to the 176. And now it's making small little rallies. Well, this floor, with the stochastic so weak, trying to turn up, but it can't. The histogram looks terrible. Um, no, the 
the distance that it's away from the previous high is really poor in the MACD, showing weakness. And the stochastic's at 19%, under 20%. And that's saying Home Depot, the darling of the home builders and everybody else, has made a potential hat trick top. And that's the reason why I always show these, this chart whenever I uh, can of the Philadelphia Housing Index made its top on the 26th of January, week of the 26th of Jan, at 369, it's trading now at 322, 40, 47 points. So that's, what, 12% or something? No big deal, but it could turn out to be a big deal if this becomes a halfway point for a move down. So yeah, let's get back to our story. So you see this pattern here? There's a difference. Why? Because Home, De Home Depot trading at 179.12, up 171, is making lower lows, had been making lower highs, sorry, making lower highs and then lower lows, and then all of a sudden stopped, rebounded, and now it's gone back to the lower highs and lower lows, except it's still holding 175s, which means that this is one of the most important numbers on a weekly, not a daily, on a weekly basis. A close on the weekly basis below 173, I've got to give it room, says 171s, the 200 period exponential moving average is going to be hit very quickly when that happens. Now let me show you the same chart pattern. The VIX index, have a look at this left side chart, that's the daily right there. Look, it's very similar, except it's making lower lows and lower highs, but it's holding the 200 period moving average. However, this is a, this is a sentiment indicator. Home Depot is the cause... VIX would be the effect. Home Depot breaks that support. I would not be surprised. It's because yields are going higher. Yields going higher from here would, I think, spook the market. And then you will see the VIX index move to the upside. It might be forming a base because it hasn't gone back to the 12s and the 11s since it skyrocketed to the 50.30. But it also needs time in these in these spikes to the upside. Look, these monthly spikes and in the weekly spikes as well. This is the longest it's gone, actually, for a little period. Uh, the highest it's gone, I should have said. The highest it's gone. But it keeps doing this, you know, multi-week, maybe seven, eight, nine week. And then it turns around and makes a little U-shaped U form by about the fourth, fifth week, tries to flatten out and then it moves higher. So that's all I'm saying is that these are the things to watch. Patterns repeat, and I'm saying that the pattern in this particular instance says that there might be a difference when you're talking a sentiment indicator that's trying to form a bottom with a sideways move, whereas if you're looking at something as important as a Home Depot, that's going to be very important in terms, for me, of a lot of things. I was asked about GE. You know, I don't even know want to talk about GE. I, I'm done. Gee, I think I'm going to be taking it off my dark or Tetris. It really, maybe I, I need to take it off for a couple of months and then put it back in July, August or something, June, July, August, somewhere there. But in this point, I don't think it's giving me enough information. Um, but the next thing was, the question was the OIH. So the OIH, the oil service, remember I said peak C, peak C1, peak C2, I'm calling it, and that this pattern says we're in a trading band, didn't have enough upside energy. The stochastic soared from the 10% area to uh, over 70%. And yet, yeah, on a percentage basis, it did go from 22.95 on the 9th to the just most recent high of 25. That's three points. That's 12%. That's very good. But the stochastic went from the 10s to the, what was the high there in the stochastic? 76, 76% 76 and look what happened. It barely, it could just not even get out of its own way. I'm afraid I don't see that. I see crude oil just stuck in a range. Now it's gone to a highs, probably on its way. Uh, the next move, the next two point move could probably be maybe a, a pullback uh, and maybe only a point and a quarter up maybe two points down, we'll see. But if you put this into the context of, oh, I just thought of what I wanted to do, um, the IYT, where it sh the IYT should be benefited. It looks, look, that's the same thing as the OIH. Rally, 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 goes to peak B, and then just a modest peak C, stuck 
until the IYT, I think I said that yesterday, is really in the 197 and a half area, one, one, preferably 200, that would be bullish. And then I'd say, you know what, I'm going to have to look at the Dow because the market should start to follow uh, the transports. In the meantime, this is not very good action. So I wanted to go through, just take time to do things that I like to do. Then the next thing I wanted to look at was this. So for my subscribers, every day I, I give this a very detailed account of what we're looking at. Um, I'd said, let me, no, that's not it. I'd said, oh, don't tell me that's another break coming up. Yep. There it is. Okay. I wanted to show you what I'm looking at here because I think it's kind of important in the context of rotation and that sometimes we can use time but not price in a rotational aspect in a correction in a digestive phase what would it take for that to change i'll talk about that when we get back to the last you don't buy into that nonsense do you you know you can't time the markets i didn't and in 2006 i set out on a mission to do just that i began by surrounding myself with the greats like tom o'brien larry pesavento david white and basil chapman I read countless books and even looked to the moon and planets for answers. Now, we both know that trading is 80% mental, so I learned the exact tools that Tony Robbins uses to overcome fear. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. Last March, the folks at Timer's Digest began tracking my newsletter signals, which through January 18, 2018, placed me as the number one gold timer for that exact time frame. Now, I can't officially be recognized until Timer's Digest has a full year of signals, but clearly, I've learned how to time the Markets, and I'd like to teach you how to do that as well. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain access to my live and archive workshops where I show you the exact same patterns that earn me this number one ranking. If you're looking for great market calls and an education, sign up for Mastering Probability today at TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So just if I can show you these 120-minute charts, Dow charts, on the left with no MACD stochastic, it's just the chart formations. Page Chapman Wave 5 came down 1, 2, 3, to 4. I'm not sure if it's going to make the 5 below 24, 6, 6, 8. We'll see. Um, but in the meantime, the MACD might deflect low. This is a very important moment to see. I've got little Fibonacci's here. Fibonacci expansion went to the 76% level, and it hit the Chapman Wave uh, automatically um, notated uh, resistance and support levels, hit that resistance right there, and it's green, and the light blue one, the cyan one, uh, 24618 is the one that was typed in for yesterday, went down to 24668. So, and now it's bouncing, 
hitting another fib level. So I'm going to be watching this because the MACD has turned uh, a little bit up, but it's still flat. And um, the histogram says that it's struggling, it's minus. And the stochastic did turn up from under 20% to over. So the stronger the, mag the stochastic is and the least that it rallies, it means that you've, used, you've got real spin, you've used up a lot of power to kind of go nowhere. That's usually not a good thing because on the way down, uh, other things can happen. So you made your peak D on the 26 and 26,616 in the daily. You plummet down. Now the stochastic, the MACD is kind of flattish, but still a little bit positive. You've hit the trend line support. Look at that trend line support. So I discuss this every day for my subscribers so they know exactly what to look for. But the stochastic is still very weak. On bounds volume is trying to rally a little bit. This is a very important period because is going to tell us that if there's no real traction to the upside, sustainable traction, then the path of least resistance could be down. I've drawn this in only as a guide. We've kind of missed now the parallel uh, count for the one-to-one -one down. Uh, it's got to be pretty much exact. This has moved at one bar to the right too many. So let's see what happens. Um, but it is saying this triangle, the, the pattern that we looked at, the wedge or the um, pennant formation has broken its key support in the uh, daily. Um, it depends where you take it from. But this is says, hey, be real careful here. This is a very selective move. You start to see slippage. So hold tight. I raised some cash. I've been doing that. We took quite a bit of cash. I'm going to be able to put it to books. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. Stay no tuned. matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics, including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters.